Hi. Hi, listen, I want you to forget about the Royal Plaza Hotel, okay? I got us an apartment. Have you got a pencil? I want you to write this down. Yeah, sure. Uh, is it the same time and everything, right? Yeah, yeah, same time. It's 720 East 55th Street, apartment number 7A. Is what's his name there yet? Brian? No, he's not. Whose apartment is this, anyway? It's Emma Mallory's. You met her when you were in Napa. Uh, she and her husband used to love New York, and he died about a year and a half ago, and she's sentimental. She just doesn't want to give it up. Great, sounds great. Oh, it is great. It's wonderful. I mean, it's it's midtown. It's close to the river. I mean, it's got, it's got river views and it's wonderful. I'm back. And just to show you how much I'm going to miss you. I uh, just wanted to make sure that you know how to reach me in in, in case um, you know for scheduling and meetings things like that. 720 East 55th Street, apartment 7A. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, well, uh, that's uh, about it. Thank you. I can't wait to see you. Me too. Um, bye bye. <clears throat> so, what happened to uh, all the meetings that you had scheduled this afternoon? Oh, oh, well, my 11 a.m. Uh, canceled, so that left me free for lunch with my husband, unless you've made other plans. Was that Sarah? You were talking to Sarah? You're not. You're not staying? You're staying at a condo instead of the suite that you usually stay at at the Royal Plaza? No, no, the, the hotel was, uh, was book solid, and, and I luckily remembered Emma Mallory's apartment. You remember Emma from... Oh, right, the Yersini Vineyards, the board of directors. Right, right. That Emma. Well, uh, her husband uh, is a bit of a New York lover, was a bit of a New York lover. Twenty years ago, they bought this apartment, and they used to come into town one week every winter and catch all the shows. Since he died, she, uh, she just doesn't want to give up on it. And I remember she always said that if I wanted to use it, I should feel free. Well, that's nice. I mean, it'll be a lot homier, right, than a hotel. Speaking of home, I had this, um, I had this long conversation with Jamie about you going to New York for a couple of days. And I was thinking about what we talked about last night and us clearing the air. And you changed your mind about going to New York with me? Almost. I mean, when Alice said I had a cancellation, I almost threw my business day to the four winds and jumped in the car with you. But I went shopping instead. Shopping? Mm-hmm. It's a little present. Half of it is from Jamie, half of it is from me. It's just to remind you that we're going to miss you while you're away and um, so you won't be lonely while you're gone. You know how I love presents. <laughs> we'll open it. You know, it was your son's idea when I told him that you would be in New York for a day or two. He had all these questions like who would tuck you in at night and who would give you a kiss goodnight and what you would do if there was a storm. And he went over to the, the drawer and got this picture out and he wanted to put it in your suitcase so that when you're in New York, you won't forget us. I could never do that and you know it. That's some picture, huh? You know, he knows that this is your favorite. He's really at an age, he, he, he notices so much, he wants to please you, and I mean, almost as much as he wants you to please him. Yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> well, Jamie knows when everybody gets a little lonely when somebody they love goes away. You know, even if it's for a short time, they miss them. And I know you, you don't sleep very well when you're in a strange bed, so when you're hogging all the blankets at 3 a.m. to yourself. You'll turn on the light and, and they will be with you, your loving family, smiling at you. It's a beautiful present. Thank you. <laughs> I really meant to do it sooner. I, I wanted to put a picture like this when you went on your trip to Napa. Tad and Dixie? Are you sure? No, no. I'm not, okay? I said I think they're having an affair. I can't, I can't prove anything, okay? I just, I don't have any photographs or anything, just a... Just a what, a feeling? Yeah, a feeling. Backed by a lot of circumstantial evidence, such as, as Dixie called you, 
Has she spoken to you? Have you had lunch since your misunderstanding? I haven't heard from her, no. Uh -huh. But, I mean, that doesn't mean anything. Maybe she's just busy. I mean, she's a working mother. Dixie's been very weird ever since we told her that we were getting engaged. And now this sudden concern for Brooke, of all people, and who she could turn to if Tad let her go. Namely, me. Brooke. Is she why this bothers you so much? So I went and I talked to her. To Dixie, not to Brooke. She's an old friend, and I... I wanted some answers. So Dixie told you that she's having... I went family? straight to her and I just said, Look, Dixie, why this sudden concern over Brooke? And you know what she said? She said, What would you do, Edmund, if Brooke were suddenly available? What did you say? I said I would be marrying Maria. Come hell or high water. It doesn't matter, Brooke or no Brooke. So she said, Great. And, and I believed her. And that was fine until I talked to her kid. Oh, please. Junior told you that Tad and Dixie are having an affair? Junior said he saw his ma kissing Ted when he came home from school yesterday. So you figured that Ted is really Tad? So I asked him, Ted, the real Ted. And he said he hadn't seen Dixie since she turned down his proposal. Well, did you tell Ted that Junior saw them kissing yesterday? No, of course not. I don't want to spook him, too. So, Ted didn't really see Dixie yesterday, but Junior says he walked in on Ted kissing his mom, so you think Dixie lied and told Junior Tad was really Ted? It adds up. To adultery? Not to me, it doesn't. I know why that is your favorite and Jamie's favorite. It's his eyes. It's because he has that sparkle. Boo! Hey! Well, it looks like somebody is celebrating Halloween a little early, huh? <laughs> he insisted on wearing his costume to play school today. Oh, well, I'm not surprised. I think he thought you weren't going to be around here for Halloween. <laughs> he told Mrs. Ellerback in his entire class that his daddy Helped him fix his costume. You did. You did you that? tell everybody that you got an authentic policeman <laughs> like whistle? That's right. Blow it That's six times, and then he gave all the other kids a chance to blow it too. Mrs. Ellerback said the same. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure she did. <laughs> what is this? Are you gonna handcuff Mama? He's been asking a million <laughs> questions about New York City. Well, I think he's of an age now. He realizes when people that he loves, you know, when they go away. These are nice. Hey. Ooh, hey. Ow. Hey, look. Look what your mama just gave me, huh, from you. Isn't it great? Isn't it the best? Thank you for such a, for such a wonderful idea. See, now when I go away, I can always take you with me for company, huh? Huh? <clears throat> you want to ask Daddy if you can put that in his suitcase for him? That's a good idea. That's a good idea. You put this right on top, okay? And listen, if something happens and I'm not here for Halloween, I promise you that that we'll have our very own private pumpkin party when I come back home, okay? Now, why don't you take this, you take this upstairs with Petra, okay? And you put it right on top of my suitcase. It's right on the bed. And we'll go hang your costume in your closet, okay? And Jamie, Jamie, guess what? You know why, you know why it's not so bad when Daddy goes away on business trips? Because when he come back, comes back, he comes back with presents. Right? Absolutely. Great. I'll be up in just a couple minutes. Okay. Let's go for Goodbye, squirrel. Oh, you look so good. You really are a wonderful dad, you know that? Yeah, well, that's because you gave me a lot to work with. Thank you. There's just one thing I, I didn't discuss with you. My next appointment today is with Dr. Kadami, and I was wondering... Should I keep it? What, suddenly two and two don't make four? Well, Dixie has just been stressed out lately. Okay, yes, she has been acting strange, but she wouldn't lie to her son. She's just too honest. You don't know her like I do. <sighs> Maybe. But, I mean, come on, Edmund, isn't it possible that a child Junior's age just is confused about what he saw? Not to mention when he saw it. Look, he didn't sound confused to me, okay? He said he saw his mother kissing Ted, and he saw it yesterday. 
He is just a kid. He's not stupid, all right? He knows what he saw, and he can tell time. And so can Ted Orsini. Ted Orsini? He doesn't always tell the truth, especially when he knows it might humiliate him. Well, why would he lie, all right? He said he didn't see Dixie. Dixie said the same thing. I, I don't know. Maybe he made one last gallant effort. And he got shot down again. Now, why would he tell you that, huh? I mean, it, it seems to me that a guy like Ted would rather fight rattlesnakes than tell his macho friend that he crawled. I mean, did you come right, did you come right out and ask him if he kissed her? No, oh, of course not. See? You wouldn't embarrass him like that, and neither would Dixie. If she could help it. I mean, she's embarrassed about this, too, how she handled Ted. Maybe, look, maybe instead of some twisted plot, to, you know, cover up this affair with Tad, maybe what it is is that she's just trying to hang on to her self-respect and help Tad hang on to what's left of his. I mean, their whole thing has been so public, and she hated that. I feel sorry for her. What about Dixie's sudden concern for Brooke's welfare? Back to Brooke again. She made a major noble sacrifice to go back to her marriage and her vows. Now, if Tad is too time in her... I'm sorry. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right, okay? Maybe. Maybe I'm just making too much of this, okay? Too much circumstantial evidence and I'm ruining a very nice day. With a woman that I love. I'm just being a compulsive investigative reporter. Okay. I'll see you later for dinner. You're leaving? Yeah, I got places to go, people to see. You not going to do anything you'll regret, will you? Me? Oh. Nine chances out of ten, I'm dead wrong about this. Tad and Dixie. Okay. But what if you're right? 